What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Orly Shani. If you are brand new to the channel, then man, you picked a good day to be here. Because today I'm actually doing something that was requested by a lot of you, um, and I don't know why I didn't think to do it. And I'm doing it today. So basically, uh, you guys all asked me for a review of my DIYs. Like now that I've had them, now that I've worn them, now that I've lived with them, which ones do I love? Which ones really stood the test of time and lasted and the technique was the right way to go? Um, and which ones maybe did I learn after the fact that I should have made it differently or that I just didn't really like as much once it was all done? So I've got a couple of my favorite DIYs back here. I'm gonna go through some of my favorites, some of my least favorites. And if you are new to the channel and you wanna make one of the things that I'm talking about in this video, I am gonna link all of those original video links below. So just scroll down to the bottom, you'll find the exact video links. You can go over and learn how to make it. And and um, if you are new, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, click the bell, do the whole turn on notifications. I don't know why YouTube wants to make it so complicated, but they do. You gotta do like three things if you actually wanna know when I have a new video out. So if you do subscribe today, make sure that you let me know in the comment section uh, so I can go down there and say thank you. Okay. We're gonna get started, and I think what we're gonna start with right now is the shoes. I would say that over the last year, my biggest videos have been shoes, uh, which is super fun. So I'm gonna start with the very first shoe DIY that I did that like really kind of blew up for me, and that was these guys right here. So these were originally inspired by the Jeremy Scott ones, which were like thigh high, and I did a hack for it in an ankle height boot. Now, after the fact, this is what I'll say. After like three or four wears, you kind of need to go in and touch them up. Um, it's just because in the areas where your foot's gonna bend when you walk, that's the areas where you start to lose a little bit because it puts some strain on the glue. If I wear them all day long, I probably lose a total of like five to 10 crystals, um, which again, there's probably like 60 on each shoe. So that's like five of each. So I can wear them throughout the day. You don't really notice that they're gone. So for me, touching them up is no big deal. I've got bags of them in my little craft closet. So I say like after every three or four wears, I just like boop, 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 boop with a little bit of glue, pop a couple more on and they're ready to go for next time. So that's these guys. Now let's move on to these. I think these might be one of my favorite heels I've ever done. These were the Christian Louboutin. I, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Some people are like, it's Louboutin. Some say Louboutin. Lubes. Can I just call them lubes? Um, that would be helpful. So anyway, I, uh, I made these, it's gotta be over a year now. Nothing has peeled, nothing has cracked, nothing is flaking off. A lot of people were like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna crack. They're gonna peel. And I mean, I'm telling you, nothing has happened on these. In the video, I do talk about the little technique details I learned between shoe one and shoe two. Make sure you watch the video and you listen to the voiceover because there are some really, really important tips that if I did it again, I would definitely do it the way that I did for the second pair. But highly, highly love these, really recommend them. Let's go to these. These are uh, the Gucci shoe bows. I really liked the way that this particular pair looks on this shoe. So I just put a little double stick tape right here at the top so that it doesn't like move or slide around on me at all because I just want these to be like this at all times. But the gunmetal metallic ones, I keep with my belts because I like put them on this shoe, then I take them off and put them on this shoe. I swap them around a lot. There were some comments, the hot glue is not gonna work, it's not gonna hold it together, they're gonna pop off, like these suck. <laughs> well, you're wrong. Um, the hot glue totally works. I can tell you from wearing them over and over again, nothing. Nothing's coming apart, the hot glue totally works. In the video description, the bows are linked so you guys can buy them. Okay, let's move on to these guys. These were the area fringe heel heels, fringe heel heels, I love these. So I did two shoes in the video. This was one pair. And this was the other pair. I'm gonna first talk about these. These I love, these I wear all the time. The glue is super strong. Um, people thought that it was gonna come off. If you really tug on them, like, Ugh. it doesn't come off, nothing's breaking, they've really lasted. The only negative I will say is that I picked a heel that was like a uh, um, slide on. And sometimes I feel like because my heel lifts up out of the shoe, these guys will get like stuck under my foot. Whereas if I had a regular shoe that was tight and my ankle was like stuck there, it doesn't matter how much they move. So if I could do it all over again, I would add this to a regular heel that either had an ankle strap or even like a pump, I think would have been a better bet. This pair, 
I do not like. So I cut the fringe to be shorter um, because it was a little bit aggressive originally and I really like that. I just don't like this shoe. Every time I put it on, I'm like, eh, it's not really flattering. I don't, I don't like it. So I would um, recommend doing this technique around like an ankle boot, like at the top of an ankle boot or something like that. Um, or maybe even all the way around a pump would be gorgeous, but I just don't like the shape of the shoe. So I don't wear these. Okay, these guys. These just went up probably about a month ago. They were the Jimmy Choo Ombre Glitter Heels. Big fan, big fan. Since doing them, I've worn them on the TV show that I work on three times. So they're really fun. They sparkle beautifully in the sunlight. I will tell you that the video definitely doesn't do it justice. So in the video, I teach you exactly how to get a really good ombre effect and the mix between the fine glitter and the chunky glitter. But I didn't, in the video, I didn't actually do the sealant, which is basically taking your Mod Podge and sealing the entire outside so that it won't flake at all. If the color that you choose is kind of like mine, it's in the silvery tone, you can use the glitter Mod Podge. What I found it does is it really marries the entire shoe even more. Slight glitter in it, which is, again, it's gonna be so hard to tell, but the slight blue glitter in it is consistent all the way through the shoe. So what I would recommend doing is, let's say your shoe is like a pinky red tone. For Valentine's Day, ooh, you do pink to red. Oh my God, it'd be so cute. I would recommend taking a tiny, tiny bit of whatever like glitter you want, let's say like a light pink glitter, and mixing it in your Mod Podge for your final seal. That way you get a tiny bit of speckles of the light pink, and then it goes into the dark red, and you just, when you angle the shoe, you'll see that consistent look. And another thing that I, I knew to do, but I don't know why I didn't do, is I didn't protect the rest of my heel well enough. You can see how there's glitter like on the inside of the shoe. This glitter comes off on my foot every time I wear it. Um, so eventually it'll all be gone, but make sure that when you do it, you tape off the entire inside of your shoe and the entire sole of your shoe so that you don't get any glitter where you don't want it. Cause I just ended up with a lot more cleanup after the fact. Did you guys catch these? These were the mirror tile boots. I cannot tell you how much I wear these. These are probably my top, Four of, of all the shoes I own, not of my DIYs, of all the shoes I own, I wear these top four. And it's for two reasons. One is the boot itself was just a really good basic, like patent kind of tight ankle boot. It goes great with jeans, it goes great with dresses, it works with everything, it works with my leather pants really well. The other thing is the back, because it's mirror, it just adds a pop of sparkle. No mirror has popped out. That Sagru stuff I talked about, it works like a charm. I don't know if you can see. The bottom has gotten a little fractured, like some of the mirror tiles. So I think if I could do it again, I would have given myself a little bit of a thicker line of the Sagru and then started my mirror tile. That way I had a little buffer when I'm walking. Cause some of these like hitting against like a curb or something, it just sort of fractured the bottom. From far away you can't tell, but up close. Um, but if you did not catch this DIY, you need to do this. They are so freaking cool and they last forever. All right, now on to a DIY that I don't love these guys. Now, let me explain. The technique worked like a charm. This technique for recovering a boot, money. You wanna do that, I highly recommend this video for it. What I don't like is the fabric. When I went to find fabric, this fabric in the sunlight had the holographic effect, but the gold is just, not flattering. I don't ever wear them because every time I put them on, I feel like the gold clashes with whatever I'm wearing. So if I could do them again, I would have done them in black sequin. I didn't do that because I wanted like the thumbnail to have that moment of like the DIY, the original, you know, and like have them be tied in. It's a good DIY. I just don't like the finished product. These I just did, you know, a couple of weeks ago. These were the uh, Jimmy Choo Alvaline bows. I've only worn them once. And that's because I have yet to swap out the back bow to make two of these front ones. Two of these fronts I would wear all the time. And because I haven't done that yet, I really, I only wore them once with a dress. If I could do it again, I would do only two front bows. I'm gonna wear them a lot as soon as I do that. The materials, legit. The technique, legit. Everything lasts. I just don't like the mixed bow. That is my two cents on that one. All right, let's move on to dresses, the more like fancy schmancy business. Um, my no-so-sequin dress. Love, love, love. 
lasts, stood the test of time, wore it all night to events. I've worn them twice now. The safety pins, as long as you get the good safety pins, not the like little cheap ones, they will hold you all night long. They will not come apart. You can make it super tight. A couple people thought that I was gonna get a good amount of chafing. I did not. Uh, it could be for two reasons. One is that I put on like a little slip dress underneath. So I did that, which I think helped a lot. Um, so those I highly recommend. Next one I'm going to talk about is the Beyonce Lion King premiere look. This DIY I love. I had planned, I had a red carpet event that was supposed to be this weekend. It got canceled. I was going to wear this to it. I was so excited and I'm so bummed that I can't now. But I will tell you, I know for sure that this will last because I did it the right way. I didn't glue this on, I hand sewed it. So I used a little bit of glue to get everything like flat and in place, but then I went around every single edge and hand sewed it. So this is another one of my favorites. I have worn it with jeans and a t-shirt, but I just haven't worn it as a gown yet. But this one is really special. It is expensive because these panels are like upwards of $150, but it's obviously a fraction of what the real deal cost. Let's move on to the JLo mirror dress. I have it hanging like this, but you can see how amazing. Oh, I think that this might be my favorite DIY dress I've ever done. I wore it um, to a red carpet event. I wore it on the red carpet. I wore it all night. I was walking around, dancing around, sitting for dinner, like no issue at all. Biggest questions I got on this one was number one, do the mirror tiles break when you sit? Absolutely not. These mirror tiles, they have holes that are meant to be sewn on. They're meant to be on clothing, so they do not break. In order to break them, actually, to get certain custom pieces, I had to use gardening shears, if you remember. So, no, they did not break. Um, other people asked if it was uncomfortable when I sat. The reason that it was not at all uncomfortable is that starting right around at the waist, you can see I start fading out and spacing out the mirror tiles. So when I sat, I actually had a little bit of room between each mirror tile so that they weren't like crunching on each other. So I do think that made a huge difference. People asked how to clean it. Clean the mirror tiles like you clean a mirror, spray it and wipe it down. If your actual dress gets dirty though, I would either spot clean or bring it to a dry cleaner. Obviously do not chuck this thing in the, in the washing machine. Um, and then I just want to highlight a couple of people that actually did this DIY. I had a few people send me their versions of this and it just makes me so happy because this shows that this worked. I mean, this bodysuit version, she wears this to perform and it's really been like lasting for her. So to me, this was one of my favorite DIYs. Um, made me so happy that people did it. And the entire night I lost one mirror. Um, okay. Let's move on. This is one of my favorite jackets that I've made. This was the sequin sleeves. I got rid of the original denim sleeves and sewed in the sequin sleeves, leaving the cuff. This is one of my favorites. I've worn it a lot. I've worn it, um, can't wear it on camera because listen, unfortunately, couldn't really wear it on the show. Um, but I have worn it in my regular life and I get a ton of compliments on it. The inspo was a denim blue with like a silvery sleeve and I really like the black on black. I just think it looks like just really polished and cool. You can use the same technique to replace any kind of sleeve. So you could do it with like a sweatshirt sleeve or you don't have to do sequin. Um, that video is really great if you just want to learn how to swap out sleeves on a jacket. I'm kind of doing all of the glitzy stuff right now. These were last week's. And I can already tell you I'm obsessed. I've worn the crapola out of them. I wore these on Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. I wore these for this for two girls nights out. And I just love them. The technique that I did, I would do again. Although a lot of you guys said, what if you just pin the patches, flip it inside out and iron it that way. My reason for not doing it is that I was really specific about exactly where I wanted the patches and was afraid that if I flipped it inside out, one pin wouldn't really be enough to hold it. And if I did multiple pins and really ironed it, then I was like, aren't the iron, aren't the pins gonna get stuck in the glue? Like I just like was like, eh, I don't know. So if you are really comfortable doing that, go for it. I liked um, the technique that I did in the video and that's how I would do it if I was doing it again because they're fully sewn on, they're strong, they're never coming off and it allows me to feel a little bit more comfortable wearing them, like nothing's gonna ever peel up. And I linked in the video exactly where I bought them so you guys can get them too. Alrighty, let's move on to these guys. These incredible ombre dyed flannels. I wore these an insane amount during the summer. I wore them like open with just like a bikini underneath. I have worn it almost like a jacket. Again, like open over jeans and a t-shirt. I get 
so many compliments. I get stopped wherever I go when I wear them. People ask where I bought them and I have that fun moment of being like, oh, I made them. <laughs> the technique I did in the video, still recommend the brand I used of dye. I've washed these over and over and they don't look any more faded than they did the day I made them. A couple people did give me a recommendation that I think if I remember correctly, vinegar neutralizes bleach. So once you bleach out the color, if you get the color you like, dunk it in vinegar and I think it will stop the bleach from working because in my case, it kept eating away and one or two of my shirts um, I had to throw away. I couldn't actually dye them because they got too um, shredded. Let's talk about the fringe skirt. So I loved this one so much that I made a second version in blue. It is, uh, this video got a ton of views. A lot of people made this DIY. After wearing it, I stand by it. Um, the most consistent question I got was, uh, because I used fabric glue, how do you wash it? Well, even if you didn't use fabric glue, this is not something you're machine washing. Like, do not throw fringe in the wash. It's going to get tangled and ratted up. You don't want that. This is a dry clean piece regardless of um, the technique you use. A lot of people asked how to make it on a dress. Just keep going. You know, we started at the bottom and we went all the way to the top of the skirt. If it was a dress, you would just go all the way to the top of the dress. That's it. But again, you can't do it on a stretch dress. It needs to be something with a zipper to get in and out because the fringe is not going to stretch. Guys, I would say this is maybe one of my top five of DIYs that I wear on the regular. I've worn these on camera three times already. I've worn them to two events. I get, again, tons of compliments. People always ask me where I got them. They came together so quickly. If you watch the video, you'll see I start off at the beginning doing a technique that I thought was going to work. And by the end, I came up with a simple way that literally they came together in minutes, like Minutes. Um, a lot of questions were where did I get my feathers? I really liked using a feather boa and I just found mine downtown. I live in LA, so downtown LA is a fabric district. I have a lot of really, you know, really great options at my disposal, but it was like a not expensive big boa and I just had to do a double row to make it look, you know, as thick as I really wanted it. Washing was obviously a big question. This is something you're gonna have to dry clean. I took it off of the camo jacket. I didn't really like that as much. I didn't, I like my camo jacket plain. Okay, guys, this was the No So Sequin Kimono. I've worn this gold one the most. I also had, I made like a um, green one and I made a striped one. Striped one I didn't like. I saved the fabric and it's in my craft room. I'm gonna turn it into something else. It felt a little like, I felt like a magician or something. I don't know. It was not, I didn't like it. If I could do it again, I would not have used the, there's two changes I would have made with the fabric glue. The first one is I would have tried to remove as many of the sequins in my seam allowance as possible because where the glue dries with the sequins, it gets really hard. Um, just fabric, it's fine, but the sequins make it like crunchy and it kind of like rubs on the inside, which isn't great. Um, or sew it. I mean, you saw that you saw the shape of it was literally just an L cut out. Um, so you could sew it and that's really simple, but this has been a, a really great one. One that I almost forgot and I don't know how that's possible, um, is my belts. So I did a fall belts tutorial and I gotta tell ya, I, this one in particular here, I wear it forwards and backwards. So sometimes like I show the belt buckle and sometimes I don't and it is my absolute go-to because I made it so perfect to my size. So because when you're making a belt custom, you can actually make it custom, it fits you in the right place at exactly the right um, tightness. So I love this so much. And because it's got the like faux python and the studs, it adds a little bit of like a rock and roll detail to things that are generally really feminine. It's legit, it holds, it's tight, nothing fades, the studs don't come out. I made three or four belts in that video, but this is hands down the one that I use the most. Um, I really recommend watching that video. It's the perfect time right now during the winter. This was a must. So I'm looking at my phone um, on my YouTube channel to see certain DIYs that I did. So the how to make a custom horoscope tee, nope, not a good video. Uh, the like fabric transfers that I used, they did not last in the wash, even though it says that you can wash them. So I still think the idea of figuring out how to make like custom printed t-shirts, like a screen printing, but a hack for it is still a really good video. But that technique, I wouldn't recommend. Um, and I didn't really like the way that one came out. How to make a denim pencil skirt. This video did really well. Um, and it was a no so video. I think the no so version is really good. Again, if you're not going to wear it that often, if you're not making it super tight, if you are, I would recommend once it's glued, 
um, going in and reinforcing it. The reason I say that is I know that for some people, sewing can be a little overwhelming. So sometimes figuring out how to make it by just gluing it in place where you're like looking at it and you're just like, okay, I know how to glue two things together. You can figure it out. And then once it's all in place, then you can go in and sew right on top of it. So sometimes it's a good way to learn. Um, the hidden message sequin pillows was killer. That was such a fun idea. I really just came up with that idea thinking this should work, right? And it actually worked. It's the one where you can kind of push the sequins one way. And when you push it the other, like a secret message pops up that you've painted on the one side. I think it's really fun. Again, now that um, Valentine's day is coming up again this would be a really great one to do as a gift um looking looking most of these i've already talked about metallic foil jeans that was fantastic oh oh my gosh the chainmail top okay this is something that i really love and have absolutely worn the glue is strong enough it holds the straps in place i've worn it with like just high-waisted levi's the black one i wear all the time um really great versatile cute great under like a blazer where all you see is a little bit of that uh, chain mail. I got a ton of people saying like it's not chain mail, it's chain mesh or it's I don't know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. See the material that's what I'm talking about. Um, that was a really fun one and I highly recommend making that. How to make a faux latex pencil skirt. The issue with this one is in the video I did not create a slit. You need a slit otherwise you're like Oh, the Kylie Jenner reflective corset. I've worn actually a lot, way more than I thought I would. I wore it over a black sweatshirt for like a girl's night out and it was really cool and really fun. Um, I just think that's a really playful one. All right, so one that I can't believe I almost forgot were the safety pin necklaces. So you guys saw me make this one on camera. This was the one that I made that I've had for a while now. This one I wear all of the time. It's probably three years old. Not a single safety pin has come off. No beads have fallen off. I love it. I wear it all the time. This is the one that I made on camera and it's really cool, but it is like a lot. So I find that I don't have as many um, options and times that I can actually wear this one because it's like so gnarly and specific, but I save it because it is really fun when I'm just wearing like a simple outfit and I want something really fun um, to have pop out. All right, just looking through, ooh, the bodysuits. How to turn a t-shirt into a bodysuit. That one was a must. Um, I made two versions of it. One was kind of a thong version and one was regular underwear version. Do the thong version. You can then wear it with absolutely anything, any like high-waisted skirt or tight leather pants and you're not gonna see panty lines. It's a super simple thing. One of the tips that I got from you guys is, is so smart and I don't know why I didn't think about was to use a zigzag stitch. So for those of you that don't know, I'm self-taught. So I did not go to school to study. I took sewing classes as a little kid and then I really am just self-taught. So a lot of times when you give me tips, it's actually really, really helpful because I just learn as I go. So for something like that, because the t-shirt was a stretch, you really needed the zigzag stitch so that when you put on something super tight, those stitches won't pop. Zigzag everything, but otherwise that DIY was really fun, really usable. Oh, the tattoo shoes and clothes, a correction. They actually really last on some things to the point that they're hard to get off. So I put them on the Timberland boots. I've had a really, really hard time getting them off. So I've got really faded butterflies on the Timberlands. Um, other things that I put them on, when I rubbed them with my finger, they rubbed right off. But the longer they're on there, the harder they are to get off, which is a good thing if you want the tattoo to be like a graphic permanently. But if you don't, um, be careful because some of them come off easier than others. But man, that was a really fun DIY. But crystal hair clips. I really love those. And those are a regular in my rotation. Usually when I wear them, I pull like part of my hair, like I part it and then I just put one right there because they're so like major and such a statement. I've opened and closed them, opened and closed them probably 30 or 40 times and not a single crystal has popped off. So the technique that I do in the video absolutely works and they're really fun to wear um, when you need a little bit of sparkle. All right. I think we did it guys. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this idea. I hope that this video was helpful and what you had in mind. Hopefully I answered some of the questions that you guys had. If you guys are new to the channel but you liked what you saw, I've got a brand new video coming out next week, a really, really fun DIY. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button turn, like click the bell and then turn on notifications that you actually get a little update when my new video comes out. Um, I do them every Friday morning. They're super fun. And to everybody else who has uh, subscribed to this channel over the last year, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. This is such a fun project for me. Doing this show is just such a blast. So I really appreciate it. Um, and that's it. Thanks guys. I'll see you next week. Another good DIY next week. Bye.